Good morning. Get started in just a moment. Happy Friday. Good morning. <clears throat> okay, uh, good morning, Sunnyvale. Happy Friday. Welcome to my weekly virtual office hours. Welcome to the end of May. Uh, this week's early artwork is actually from my visit to Moffett Field, uh, which I visited earlier week, this week, but uh, you heard probably a little bit about that from the news, uh, but I thought it was actually a perfect, a perfect mural for this week uh, with the, you know, with the Hangar 1 um, and also uh, Air Force, uh, I think this was Air Force 1, but of course Air Force 2 uh, was at Moffett Field earlier this week. And, you know, I thought this mural uh, was a perfect one for, for what we're seeing this week and, you know, all the great things that are happening here in Sunnyvale. Uh, but we'll get, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the vice president's trip uh, to Sunnyvale a little bit later. But, you know, I think it was, it was good to be out on Moffett, on the Moffett tarmac and seeing uh, the reskinning for Hangar 1 continuing and, you know, and then, of course, uh, be there for the big the big event for the day. So we'll talk a lot a lot more about that a little bit later. But let's go ahead and get started. Good morning. I'm Sunnyvale Mayor Larry Klein. Uh, thank you for joining me again this week. Uh, it's been a very busy week, uh, but this is the 161st installment of my weekly virtual office hours. You know, hope everyone's doing well, staying healthy, enjoying the good weather. Uh, you know, I've now reached. We've now reached 1,166 days since the March 16, 2020 county health order started the shelter in place in an attempt to slow the spread of COVID-19. You know, over three years ago, I converted my weekly coffee shop office hours into these weekly live stream addresses. And except for surgery and my recent spring break, I haven't missed a week since. Uh, but I just want to thank everyone who's joined me over the last few years. You know, people still say they appreciate you know, seeing and hearing from their mayor each week, uh, whether or not they're watching it live or watching it delayed. Uh, but, you know, these weekly addresses allow me to reach a lot more people than I can at, at the local coffee shop. But uh, they give me a chance to give you some updates on what's happening around the city, uh, give you uh, give you an update on some of the upcoming events and just answer some of your answer some of your questions and give you some uh, words of encouragement. So thanks for allowing me to continue to represent you and work for Sunnyvale. You know, most Fridays like today, um, I follow up this live stream session with an in person meeting at Bean Seen on Murphy Avenue. So if you would like to reserve a fifteen or thirty minute time slot, just email me at council at larrykline.com and we can get you on my calendar. You can always see my calendar uh, on when I'm having those office, uh, um, office hours at the local coffee shop at www.larrykline.com. So definitely take a look when you get a chance. Um, and then um, let's just go ahead and get started and talk about what's happened at the federal, state, county, and city level over the last two weeks. You know, last Tuesday evening, council met, and we started out the meeting with two special orders of the day. First, we declared May as Jewish American Heritage Month, uh, and it was good to give an update on uh, the Eruv um, that the city's been working with, with, with some of our Jewish community. 
and then we also declared June as Pride Month and lots of events coming up in June as, uh, for Pride. Uh, and then as far as the main meeting, uh, we had several things on the agenda. First, we had our follow-up meeting for establishing the pedestrian mall on the 100 block of South Murphy Avenue. And so uh, we started this process last year and kind of did intermediate um, um, meetings with, with council and staff. You know, we announced our intention to convert um, that, that block into a pedestrian mall. And we're following the, the Pedestrian Law Act of 1960. Uh, so there's a whole process that we need to go through. And uh, from that standpoint, you know, we, we declared um, the, the intention. And then last Tuesday night's meeting was to basically kind of finalize that. So we, we did permanently say that we're going to be closing um, the South, South, one, the 100 block of South Murphy Avenue. We also, you know, updated our, you know, downtown specific plan to, um, to indicate that. And then we also said that we're going to set aside $800,000 of community benefits to make sure that that whole uh, block is ADA compliant, looking at signage and all the things that, that in order to make it a permanent pedestrian mall, uh, we really need to take a look at. And then <clears throat> we had two other items on the, and, and you know, that, that passed unanimously from council. Uh, ultimately, the rest of uh, of the, you know, all the only people who spoke, spoke in favor of it and was happy to see that that actually come to pass. Um, and, you know, that had been talked about for so many years, uh, for the last 20 years, 30 years, you know, every few years, it's, we should really close Murphy Avenue. And finally, you know, this is one of the positive things to take out of COVID that, that we finally tried it and it was a success. And now it's, it's permanently part of our community and our downtown. And, you know, that, that's really um, a gem from our standpoint of, of um, what we have, you know, saving that historic Murphy Avenue, which, you know, certain cities around us don't have a downtown, you know, a real, a, a real place for people to congregate. We still have that and, and maintaining that and making it that much better is, is really a fantastic thing. Um, and then um, next we had two art related items. So, you know, everyone knows that I, I have a great love of art and adding more of it into Sunnyvale. So, you know, two items um, really will make add a lot more art into the city. So, you know, council uh, approved the, the 16 design proposals for the phase two of our great box cover up pro project, you know, so that's covering, you know, the utility box um, boxes around the city uh, with artwork and you know this these 16 locations were were further spread out you know the first the first 12 were downtown the second 16 are more spread out around the city and then you know we we authorized the art commission to do a phase three and that will be around um, several high schools uh, so that that will be um, so I think five different high schools around the city and and focusing on working with students at those high schools to to uh, have them do the murals at the high schools. And then the second item that we had was, was we chose the final icon for uh, Sunnyvale's icon sculpture project. And so, you know, this is similar to the hearts in San Francisco, or, or you've seen the sharks conceivably in San Jose. So these are fiberglass sculptures that are then painted by artists and then displayed around the city. And so we ultimately chose the sun. So the sons, the sons of Sunnyvale, um, and it's about it'll be about four feet tall. And you know, council ultimately requested that they be put in multiple locations. So staff had recommended, oh, let's focus on five different parks and having a whole bunch of them there. I think you know the the what what's better is to have you know them destination locations around the city and providing that you know that that destination of, oh, I want to go to that park because, you know, this is, this is an amazing, you know, this is an amazing piece of art. And so, you know, I think it was good from that standpoint that council focused on, let's say, um, spreading them around from that standpoint. Um, and yeah, the art commission will choose the final artists and the final design of those sculptures, but, but, you know, I was really happy to uh, see that, that we finally got that program moving forward. You know, having we several years ago we approved the art master plan, and all these are you know efforts to get more art into to our community. And then we finally voted on 
um, our applicants for our boards and commissions. And, you know, there were lots of applicants. Um, you know, the, the new Human Relations Commission alone had 18 applicants. And so it was good to kind of go through that process. And, you know, we were there, that meeting went past midnight, uh, which is, we don't do that often. Normally we're entering, ending around, you know, 10 or 11 p.m. So, so um, it's been, you know, last week was busy, you know, last, and then last, that was, so Tuesday night, we went past midnight. And then um, Thursday was uh, our all day budget workshop. So actually on that morning I kicked off uh, was bike was the first day of bike to wherever day. So it's that three day event. And, you know, it was good to get out on the bike. So I got out on the bike and visited uh, one of the energizer stations in our city. And there was a competition of, of different cities signing up to have people to pledge to ride. You know, Sunnydale ended up in sixth place. So not too bad. Um, you know, for, for, and so it was a friendly competition for all the, all the cities in Santa Clara County, San Mateo County to have people to pledge to ride. So, so happy that, that, you know, a good number of our residents, uh, pledged to ride Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, Saturday last week. Um, but you know, that, that was the beginning of my day. And then, uh, we had, a, we had the all day budget workshop. And so, you know, this was in the third of our all, um, all day meetings, three all day meetings that we have every year. The first one in January, our strategic session, the second one in February, which is our budget proposal and um, uh, study issue workshop. And so that's where we end up ranking our different study issues. Uh, but the budget it, the, for the city is very good. You know, at least for this year, it looks like we're already meeting um, the the pre-pandemic numbers for sales tax, uh, property tax, of course, continues to go up. Um, and then uh, TOT, transportation occupancy tax. We are seeing uh, the, the amount of business travel and, and recreational travel coming into the city. So, so that's actually very good from our standpoint. You know, the city's finances are moving in the right direction. Um, and, you know, and, you know, almost all the revenues are returned to pre-pandemic levels. So our recommended budget uh, totaled $607 million across all funds, um, which was the highest budget in city's history. You know, normally we, in the past, we've been about $500 million. So it's about um, $100 million over that, over that. And, you know, there are definitely projects in there, capital projects and all that. You know, we still have a relatively cautious budget. You know, lots of unknowns. What will be happening with inflation and conceivable recession, you know, cutbacks, but but we focused on maintaining those reserves, which kind of helped us through um, helped us through COVID definitely. And then we have, of course, there's the ongoing worry about the unknowns of return um, on retirement benefits from a state level. So the Calpers, you know, we always we always have that liability because of our because of our retirements um, pensions. And so making sure that that CalPERS meets their, hopefully meets their numbers is always a thing. Um, and, you know, for from our standpoint, you know, we can't, we have no control on that. So we have a retirement uh, trust, pension trust that that basically sets aside money so that we can def, de, pay down, down pay or pay down some of that liability and hopefully, you know, uh, making sure that we we're setting them outside enough money so that when there's that peak and that peak is about you know uh, 2035 um, we we have enough of our reserves and we pay down um, that retirement benefits so that you know we can maintain our city services as they currently are. Uh, we did do some extra things. Um, we did approve all the study issues that were above the line. So so as we rank them. You know, looking at staffing, we we added additional funding to make sure that you know all those all the required study issues um, that staff said that they could deal with but needed additional funds for uh, were funded. Uh, and I think that's the first time in my memory that we've ever done that. And we also increased uh, our tree trimming for the next two years to catch up on some of the things that we that we delayed during COVID. You know, so you know normally we have about a seven year average on on trimming trees. Um, what we ended up doing is directing staff to go ahead and invest additional dollars. So for the for the two years, first two years of COVID, 
um, we tightened our belt. You know, we reduced the number of trees that we're trimming. Um, so some trees are out there haven't been trimmed for um, eight or nine years. And so uh, going back to that average, making sure that, you know, our residents are safe and, and those trees are well trimmed is important. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was a really long day. We started our budget workshop around 8.30 in the morning, and we didn't finish until 7.30 in the evening. So uh, one of our longer, one of our longer days as far as that's concerned. And then last Saturday, actually last Friday morning, I was speaking at a global CEO conference and extolling the the the, the virtues of of uh, Sunnyvale and Sunnyvale as a business. You know, the city really is a business, and you know, having you know the twenty year plan, the ten year balanced budget, you know, the the merge public safety model, all these things, you know, help us save money, help us plan for the future, make sure that we, you know. We're investing before things fall apart. You know, it's like it's it's our twenty year plan to invest two hundred million dollars to to uh, renovate all of our parks and making sure that that equipment is is up to date as much as possible. So all those things. Uh, it was actually great to speak at the conference and you know um, talk about how wonderful uh, Sunnyvale is, and you know a lot of that has to do with the past policies that were put in place uh, by previous councils, but you know defining new directions and and you know making sure that it's a great place for for the city to thrive for our residents to thrive and our businesses to thrive um and then last saturday morning uh we had a town hall at columbia neighborhood center and so uh this was uh basically a town hall that brought together you know parents and students fremont union high school district uh, representatives in the vta um to talk about transportation for students, high school students from North Sunnyvale to to Fremont High School and Homestead High School, you know this is one of the things that that there's an equity issue. You know, in 1981 they closed uh, Sunnyvale High School, uh, where King's Academy is now, and ultimately, you know, that started a process of having to bus uh, students from very far away to to the center of Sunnyvale or to the south end of Sunnyvale. Um, and, you know, adding walkability, making sure that, that, you know, that there's a high school, especially as we're looking to finalize Moffat Park specific plan and look, looking at adding 20,000 units in North Sunnyvale, um, the, that only makes that problem worse. So it's great to have discussions. We'll see what, what follow-up VTA has, Fremont Union has, but, but uh, it, I think it's really important from that standpoint to see that go forward. And then on Saturday afternoon, it was a perfect day on the bay, um, but I was out at Baylands Park for um, a, an event focused on neurodiversity. And so this event was basically uh, providing an opportunity for um, building a supportive relationship between our first responders. So Sunnyvale Public Safety was there um, and our neuro minority individuals. So people with autism, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, you know, so, so um, great to have attend the event, you know, meet, you know, some, some of our residents, some people from surrounding community. Um, but, you know, it was lot, lots of fun, you know, in the afternoon, there was actually a neuro Olympics um, activity. So lots of activities, uh, but it was, great you know thanks to everyone who came out and you know it's always it's always good to to support you know we have a very diverse community and and you know is in, in uh, helping build that relationship with public safety and all of our residents I, I think is critical so uh, happy to be there you know they were happy to see the mayor come out and then uh, the big event of course was Monday um, you know Monday this week the vice president Harris uh, was here in Sunnyvale to celebrate a $4 billion CHIPS Act semiconductor R&D and manufacturing investment at Applied Materials uh, here in Sunnyvale. And so it was a really busy day. So I, you know, I first uh, met her on the tarmac uh, with mayors from Mountain View, Santa Clara, and the head of NASA Ames. And so it was good to see Air Force Two land at Mount Moffett and um, be able to welcome uh, the vice president and talk with her for a few minutes on the on the tarmac a fantastic from that standpoint uh and it was good to see lots of people come out to to welcome her and you know there they see air force two there in the um 
right next to hangar one was uh, pretty impressive. So, you know, um, great, great to be, have that honor. You know, it's like it used to be uh, every time the vice president and the, and the president landed at Moffitt, uh, the mayor for Mountain View and the mayor for Sunnyvale would meet them on the tarmac. That actually hasn't happened for, I think, uh, more than 10 years now. So, so good to, good to see that. And, you know, it was the first time uh, a president or vice president had visited Sunnyvale, I think, since the Clinton times. So uh, that whole investment is, you know, very good for Sunnyvale, very good for our future. You know, it's um, that $4 billion. Uh, and, it, and I'll talk a little bit about that in answer to someone else's question, um, is part of a $280 billion investment that the Biden administration made last year. So they made that announcement last year. And so this is one of the first stages, you know, once this is complete, uh, conceivably, uh, there'll be other investments uh, nearby, uh, because the, it, it's not just one building, it's, it's conceivably a, a much bigger campus. And, and it's uh, trying to bring chip semiconductor fabrication and that technology, that understanding back to Silicon Valley. It's keeping the silicon in Silicon Valley. And, and yes, you know, we used to be the world leader as far as that's concerned. And in the interim, you know, a lot of that has traveled, you know, outside of the United States. And so bringing that, bringing that education, bringing that you know, mindset that that we're we're going to focus on cutting edge technology um, here. Uh, from a semiconductor standpoint, is only you know is is in Sunnyvale's best interest, so the Valley's best interest, uh, the Cal California's best interest. You know, it was great to be able to speak. You know, uh, just before the vice the vice president uh, spoke, but talking about how important this is for Sunnyvale, and you know, and and you know, we had representatives from California there. Uh, from the from Newsom's uh, Governor Newsom's office, talking about that investment and what it means to to California, also. So uh, happy to get to be in the spotlight, uh, bring Sunnyvale in the spotlight for a little bit. Um, and then on Tuesday, uh, council met and we started with the ceremonial oath of office for our newly appointed board and commission members. So it was good to uh, welcome them on board, and then. We had two main things as far as our council meeting. First, we selected the preferred alignment for the Bernardo Avenue undercrossing project. So this is a project um, between Sunnyvale and Mountain View to create an undercrossing that goes uh, where Bernardo and Evelyn meet currently uh, under the Caltrain tracks, under, under Central Expressway and come up on the far side. And so there are two different designs, a west design and an east design. We ended up choosing the east design, which was a little bit longer, but that actually allowed several things. It allowed um, there to be a large light tunnel in the middle, so so we have you know natural light, not just um, not just uh, electrified light uh, throughout the tunnel. And then it also basically was better from a staging standpoint, so it reduced the cost. It also didn't have to move utilities, all those sorts of things that that will make that project a little bit less expensive, uh, which is really important to make sure that we can actually get it done and finalize getting the funding. You know, it's a mixture of funding from uh, Measure B funds, 2016 Measure B funds that are already being set aside as far as that's concerned, but some state funding, some federal funding, and we're still not there, but we have now have enough to finalize the designs and making sure that, that we then figure out what the real price tag is going to be. And then we also approved the installation of six of, of sidewalks um, along the east side of Poplar, uh, between El Camino, uh, Real, and Peterson Middle School, and the installation of sidewalks along Bryant, um, um, on Bryant Way. So, you know, ultimately that that was, you know, something that we kicked off evaluating several years ago after, you know, it's like the, about three and a half years ago, three students um, from Peterson Elementary were hit in the crosswalk in um, along El Camino Real uh, right there. And I, I, you know, I wouldn't say Caltrans actually listened, you know, so I did a lot of advocacy, um, trying to make sure that they improved striping, they did, you know, they, they did a countdown timer for, 
for those traffic lights or for those uh, pedestrian crossing signals so that, you know, students uh, if they decide that they want to try to cross before while while your the warning light is going on, they actually know how much time they have. Um, they also added lead pedestrian timing for those intersections. So so making sure that students are ma mainly through the so the, the those people that are crossing those intersections have basically a head start so that that when the lights turn green, people immediately start to turn. No, they can actually see that students are are showing their intention crossing the street. Um, they're in the crosswalk. So lots of things have happened since that those initial um, that that initial effort uh, to make sure that the, that intersections those intersections are safer. But you know, one of the things that came up when we evaluated, and I walked those that neighborhood many times, um, was that when this converted from county, you know, basically initially it was uh, county land. So it was unincorporated county land. Um, and basically we brought it into Sunnyvale. At that time in the 70s, uh, the residents basically said, no, we don't want sidewalks. We want to maintain the look and feel of being, you know, kind of more of a rural standpoint. Um, and so we didn't install sidewalks at that time. Now it's looking at, um, you know, so putting in sidewalks for the safety of the residents, for definitely the safety of the students. Um, and so we're going to be doing a quick build project later this summer. And then this is looking for a permanent sidewalk and you know, doing that conversion. We still need to find funding for that, but, but happy to see you know, um, what can be done there. Um, but yeah, happy to see that finally get across the across the line. You know, it's like we did a study issue, and then, uh, but ultimately, you know, it's like finally it's bringing that to council and and choosing what could be done there. But but it was good to see uh, several several people that I've been working with for years uh, that are part of Santa Clara Uni Unified School District and and the PTA. Lots of you know, lots of letters and parents that we're happy that we're finally moving forward with this for, for the safety of the students. And then um, on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday afternoon, there was a groundbreaking event for um, Tipsy Pub. It's a new mini golf bar. Uh, so it's, it's, in, it's mini golf inside and it's a bar and restaurant, um, but it was good to get a good idea of what that, you know, what that's going to look like. Uh, they'll actually be breaking ground uh, pretty much immediately, and they're thinking they'll be open by some time in the fall. So they're thinking October, November. So moving very, very quickly to to redo that space. It'll be it's very interesting. It's not just a flat flat restaurant. There'll be a mezzanine uh, up above the bar area and and rooms that you can reserve and all that. So uh, fantastic from that standpoint to to um, be there and, and, you know, welcome a new possible restaurant. And that's, and that's located right across from Pacific Catch. So it's the area, you know, um, just north of Target and Pacific Catch right there at TAFE and McKinley. So good to see one of the large anchor stores go in. Um, but, you know, it's, it was good, good to have a, yet another, res, um, another place to come. And then uh, in the evening, um, that same Wednesday evening was the uh, the one year anniversary for the Hotetra Hotel, and they've been very active with having events and having you know welcoming people. You know, there that's the hotel on, at in Moffat on Java Drive, and you know they're seeing a lot of you know they're they're doing a lot of events and being part of the community, and it was great to welcome them or congratulate them on one year of being part of our Sunnyvale community. Um, that's pretty much it for this week. You know, as I said previously, I won't be covering, you know, COVID numbers anymore unless things change dramatically, um, you know, uh, but I do still continue spending a lot of time advocating on our city's behalf at the county level, at the state level, at the federal level, you know, lots of partners to talk to on funding and what's happening. Um, let me go ahead and announce some of the upcoming events. So Monday, of course, is Memorial Day, you know, the day to honor our fallen in the military. So please take a moment to, you know, um, honor and remember those that made the ultimate sacrifice for, you know, for our freedoms. Um, so, you know, so, you know, enjoy your three day weekend, uh, but do do spend some time on Monday uh, thinking about uh, those that that gave their gave their most.
for our, for, um, for our country. <clears throat> and then next Wednesday afternoon at 5.30 p.m. at our new, at our new city hall, we'll be having our pride flag raising event. So this will be the, the first time we've raised the, the pride flag at our new city hall. You know, the, the first time we did it um, again was back in 2019. We had a big celebration, um, but we did a more, it was a morning thing, a morning event. And one of the things I wanted to do was kind of make it um, an afternoon evening event to, to basically, um, give more people a chance to attend. You know, it's like heading to work and all that in the morning is always difficult, uh, 5.30. So that'll be five, happening 5.30 next Wednesday evening. And then of course, um, there'll be pride events all through June uh, and I'll be pub publicizing those. And I think they're, um, the city's already been publicizing that on our website, but, but definitely uh, enjoy, enjoy pride month, June. And then of course, next weekend, is the Arden Wine Festival, which is the unofficial kickoff to summer. Uh, so that'll be happening both Saturday and Sunday, June 3rd and 4th, uh, downtown, lots of, you know, some food, uh, lots of art and lots of neighborhood partners that'll be publicizing that they're there. So two days of fun, hopefully you can attend. And then as far as upcoming council meeting, our next council meeting is June 6th. Uh, we'll be starting with a study session on the Village Center Master Plan. Um, we'll have our annual public hearing on fiscal year 2023-2024 budget and resource allocation plan. So it's a kind of a supplemental meeting um, to, um, to our all-day meeting that happened last week. Um, and then we'll also be reviewing a proposed fees and changes for fiscal year 2023-2024. So some of the fees and, you know, all of our fees are um, basically... Um, to cover the cost of, of doing business. So it's all, it's the hours. And so it's, it's based upon the average time that it takes for, for, you know, our planning department or our utility department or whatever to do their work. And so, you know, all that is uh, part of that fee, um, fee approval that we end up doing every year. Sometimes we add additional fees, depending upon what, you know, what new things we undertake or what you know, what suggestions we have from staff. Let's go ahead and get to our weekly questions. If you have a question, please add it to the comment and I'll try to get to it. Uh, Susan asked, just curious, where is Sunnyvale, where in Sunnyvale is Applied's new facility? Is it at, is it on the old AMD or national site? So, so no, it's actually um, not on the, the old, old AMD site, of course, is now housing. Um, that's almost complete, but it's um, the AMD site has a six and a half acre park, Moekama Park that opened up uh, last year, and then you know about 1,100 units of housing, uh, apartments, and condos or apartments and duplexes. Um, but the new applied materials site is actually right next to their old facility on our. It's on our Kez, about halfway between Wolf and Lawrence, you know Wolf Road and Lawrence Expressway, um, and so. It's um, Applied's current uh, facility is about uh, 40, 40, 44,000 square feet, and this will be over 100,000 square feet. Um, uh, yes, and similarly, Joe asked, how big is Applied Materials R&D Lab, and how long will it take to be built? Uh, so yeah, so, so the, current, the current Applied um, Lab is about 44,000 square feet. Um, the new Epic Center is what Applied is calling it, will be 100, 180,000 square feet. Um, and that's for their, their labs. And, so, and then there'll be support labs for Applied, for um, customers, uh, for university partners and you know, other partner space. Uh, so the groundbreaking will actually happen in just a few months. Um, and then a plan to be open in the first quarter of 2026. And, and they're pushing, they're already pushing their construction uh, team to shoot for fourth quarter of 2025. So they're looking very quickly to build this very large facility. And, you know, it's all, you know, all positive news for Sunnyvale as far as that's concerned. Sharon asked, uh, Sunnyvale is happy and safe. I'm wondering though, how green we are. For example, 
where uh, where the old growth rose bushes that surrounded what is now being called the jewel on the corner of Sunnyvale Avenue and McKinley, where they really were they replanted or simply torn up. So the city has lots of rules uh, about tree removal. Uh, but of course, bush, bushes and plants are not protected. You know, we, we do go through a whole approval process for all of our trees. And most developers are, you know, actually when they're doing redevelopment are taking out um, um, old plants and then replacing them with native species uh, to reduce the, the water usage. So, so, you know, trying to make sure that they're being more green as far as that's concerned. Um, to, can you, to continue on 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 Sharon's questions. Um, are the numerous new giant buildings going in being equipped for solar with solar for energy? So um, definitely we pushed the green building codes. So all the new construction is all electric. Uh, we don't require solar on all of our buildings, but we do require them to be solar ready. You know, some buildings, some, some buildings are deciding to do rooftop gardens. So they, they're creating open space and, and adding more plants and all that to, to what they're doing. Um, but we don't require, you know, um, solar on everything yet, but we're getting there, you know, it's like, uh, making sure that, that, you know, the buildings are solar appliances are solar. One of my positions is on Silicon Valley clean energy. They have lots of programs to, to add, you know, solar appliances or electric appliances into your home. Uh, they have a whole solar program to, to, um, add, um, solar panels. So, you know, there's lots of good things that, that Silicon Valley Clean Energy is doing. And then to finish uh, her question, um, to what extent is the city concerned with conservation of nature, um, one heritage orchard? So, you know, Sunnyvale is really setting an example. So we're adding open space, you know, we're, we're you know, People are removing their front lawns and adding native plants, but the city's adding opening space so that the people have place places to enjoy. You know, large large lawns and you know, um, big big areas um, of greenery. So we've added three parks in the last um, six or seven years, and we actually are adding another park next year. Um, we're adding lots of open space around. You know, the new city hall, about it's six acres of open space, but, you know, the city, actually the new city hall is a perfect example of how we're setting that example um, for developers, for residents, you know, um, for mature trees, we moved um, 12 very large mature trees, <clears throat> including two large camper trees, which I think were 250,000 tons uh, between the tree and the rootstock and all that for moving from one location to another on the campus. Yeah, you know, we did have to remove several redwood trees, but we ended we ended up repurposing all that wood. So if you go to the new city hall, you'll see um, benches and end tables and big conference tables that are all that are all utilized redwood that was previously on that site that had to come down when we built the new city hall and then. You know, um, we're actually adding, I think it's net 50 new trees to the new campus. So, you know, it's not just, so we had to remove trees, but any trees, um, so we moved a certain number, we had to tear down, we had to remove a certain number of trees, but then we're ending up replacing that number plus 50 to, I think, somewhere between 50 to 90 new trees being added around that campus. Um, and then, of course, the the new City Hall itself was was lead platinum net zero, and lead platinum means that you know uh, we're looking at the environmental impact of everything from low emission carpets to you know smart smart um, solar panels. You know we have all kinds of things for to to um, to do reflective light. You know so our solar panels are two sided; they take reflective light. Uh, we have blinds, automatic blinds that that go up and down to reduce the amount of sun coming in, uh, to reduce the heat that, that's coming into the building, so that we can maintain a constant temperature. Um, you know, and you know, we actually ended up expanding the roof in order to make the building net zero. So we expended additional money to make sure that we actually had enough solar panels to make the make the building a net zero building. 
so that you know we're creating as much power with solar panels as what we need and so we have battery backup and all that but but setting that example so that um you know when we talk to developers talk to residents it's like yes you can invest the appropriate money to to do the right thing at the end of the day um allison asked i uh, and and actually it's from a from a green building stand or from a um um climate action um plan standpoint we're doing the next group of climate action playbook um actions so we're, we're evaluating that for the next four years so that's one of the efforts that's going on right now uh, what additional things that we're doing so we've added you know um we're you know and, and it's a multitude of different things of either you know water conservation or adding you know ev charging around the city you know there's a lot of electrifying our fleet you know lots of good things that the city is doing uh, to set the example and to make sure that that we are doing what we can to electrify everything to add solar panels to to make sure that we're conserving you know around the city so you can get in, you can get involved in that climate action playbook um, plays that we're that we're currently evaluating Allison asked I saw a rate notice are our rates increasing so yes our rates are increasing um, and you know utility costs um, are that vary and and it basically it's based upon the actual cost of doing business um you know it's it's delivering that service it's the cost of that service from a city standpoint you know the city's proposing a four percent increase for water a nine percent increase for wastewater and a six percent increase for solid waste and you know um so yeah, a typical single family residential utility bill will increase about six percent um which ends up being about ten dollars and 45 cents so that's an additional um two dollars and 70 cents 77 cents for water uh five dollars and 15 cents for wastewater and two dollars and 53 cents for solid waste so and recycling um you know the city doesn't make money um, on its utilities it's it's really the cost of operation and, and delivery of those services so you know like valley water is currently proposing an increase to our water to water rates by 14 and a half percent for the next two years and Sunnyvale's lucky that we get our water from two different sources the silica the San Francisco PUC and silica and valley water and we get to trade off those costs a little bit um and we luckily we do reserves to to uh basically deal with increase in you know a bump a, a rapid bump in in cost and so you know valley water is considering increasing that their rates by 14 and a half percent for the next two years uh ultimately we hope that that you know it will stabilize back to the 9.9 percent .9 increase that they do every year but but we buffer those costs with our reserves and we're able to make sure that we the the residents didn't bear that cost increase that the valley water is doing uh, mark asked last week um i need help i was in my wheelchair and fell down twice because of sidewalks being uneven how can i get the sidewalks repaired quickly so i know that that they are out there i think this week um trying to improve those sidewalks and doing the quick build and then getting those sidewalks on the long-term list to to redo the sidewalks which we do every summer um you know so uh probably won't be this summer that they do the full rework but but definitely the next summer uh Dreeti uh asked dear mayor klein what steps can be taken by us sunnyvale residents to improve public transportation in sunnyvale especially as our traffic dilemma is getting out of hand so one of the best things you can do is just uh, write letters to council. You know, we had a citywide shuttle uh, study issue that we ended up removing this year. I was a little sorry to see that pass um, or see that being uh, killed. Um, hopefully we'll be able to re reinstate that next year. Um, I think it's really important to, to look at, you know, um, transportation for young and old around the city and I think that's you know that's one of the good things that we can do um but yeah raising that to council you know saying that you want to see a citywide shuttle as quickly as possible whether or not you come to a council meeting or email council that's something that you can do to to make your voice heard um 
Holly and several others asked, we recently received a new yard trimming cart with a note that said, we're replacing yard trimming carts as part of our standard maintenance. Our existing cart I and I suspect others are in perfectly working order. I would hope that the city of Sunnyvale in particular, the Department of Recycling and Waste Management would be more mindful of not creating unnecessary waste. So yes, uh, the city is in the process of replacing new yard trimming carts um, or your old yard trimming carts with new car, with new trimming yard trimming carts. Uh, but the the carts have a warranty and must be de decommissioned when that warranty expires, and they have a warranty of roughly about 15 years. So, so that's the the general lifespan of a cart. Uh, but by removing them before they hit their end of life, um, we can actually send them um, back to a plastic recycling plant where they can be melted down, merged with new plastic, and then made into brand new carts. So, you know, leaving them in the field any longer would actually cause them to actually have to end up in landfill. So, so this is one of the things that we try to do. You know, this is our, you know, when we're doing long-term planning, it's like, okay, we take them out of the field just before they reach end of life and uh, because they can still be recycled and, and, and utilized and, and it's better for, better for the environment, better for, you know, what we're doing, not, not letting them completely fall apart. And, you know, and then it's a cost of doing um, uh, replacement around you know around the city it's like if, if one or two were we we're having to replace them one one by two it would actually be more costly for the city as opposed to replacing all the carts in a specific neighborhood uh, that's all the questions let me see if i see any questions in the comment um kevin asked is there a place to check to see what construction is still going on such as is Denny still planning for going in on Matilda across from downtown and also what is going in at the old McDonald's site on El Camino uh, near Bernardo. So, so yeah, there's, there's a place on the city website to talk about, you know, the, the planning of what goes on from a construction standpoint, that being said, you know, um, the general permits, uh, they don't, they don't go into detail. So they define what they're, what the, what the, um, what, is going on. So like the Denny site, um, that is completely finished. Uh, they're currently negotiating with Denny's on trying to get that redone, but the site itself is complete. It's now, um, now it would be a specific permit to convert that into um, a restaurant. And so, you know, as far as I know, they're still evaluating that and hopefully that'll come through sometime soon. As far as the old McDonald's site, that's going to be an Indian restaurant is what I've heard. And so they're doing those re that reconstruction. And um, at last I heard uh, the old Wendy's site. Um, so the Wendy's on Matilda, that will actually be coming a, will become a Taco Bell. So, you know, other restaurants coming in, you know, some of them private, some of them are chain restaurants, but, you know, always a, always a wide variety as far as that's concerned. Um, looks like that's all the comments that, or at least the questions. Think, thank you for everybody wishing me happy Memorial Day. Hope everyone has a good weekend. Let's go ahead and wrap up. Thanks for joining me again this week. We continue to live, live in interesting times, you know, New issues uh, come up almost every day, but I want you to know that mo no matter what challenges we face, we face them together. You know, I'm proud of Sunnyvale and how our residents have responded to the challenges over the last few years, but I'm just thankful to everyone who helps out in our community, shows their generosity, shows their kindness. You know, your actions uh, and your attitude really do make a difference. You know, Sunnyvale will emerge from this as a stronger community. We're in this together and we will get through this together. Thanks for listening. Have a great long weekend. Goodbye.